Good afternoon. I want to focus in my comments um, on things that I think the round table can help catalyze, um, help explain, or just be a nudge to the rest of us about. Um, and so in the time that I have, I'm going to actually try to do three things. One is to offer some key principles. The second is to provide a context. And then third, talk about not two, but three ideas that I think, I think, assuming that red light doesn't go on, I'll try to get to all three ideas. The key principles are pretty straightforward and probably are summative of a lot of what you have heard. The first is that multifaceted interventions are needed. There's no magic bullet, and despite the desire of our policymakers to have that. And if there's one thing that this roundtable can continue the drumbeat on, it is communicating to policymakers how there isn't that magic bullet. We've done a terrible job of communicating that. Because whenever you go and explain about a multifaceted approach, you know, the, the instinct of the policymaker says, yes, but if we could just do one of those things, which would it be? We have to do a better job of explaining that. Second, when it comes to obesity, um, the distinction between primary and secondary prevention is not always clear. Um, and we should embrace this because it brings more interested parties to the table. And the last panel, both Marion and Cheryl Bartlett talked about that. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if people are interested in phys improved physical activity and nutrition because they want to prevent obesity or because they want to manage diabetes. The interventions are very similar, and certainly when we're thinking about what happens in the community, they are the same. And that brings more players to the table. So setting a much larger table for these discussions is incredibly important. The third principle would be that each community faces different challenges. So the multifaceted approach is going to look different in each community. And so this has created a lot of con confusion in our communication. Um, but it can really be reframed in uh, in terms of how we emphasize local decision making. So the community transformation grants isn't the federal government coming in and telling communities what to do. Community transformation grants is the federal government giving people resources and the incentives to bring the players to the table to determine what is best for their community. And we haven't done a very good job of communicating that. It also takes partnerships. It takes partnerships between the clinical world and the community world and between the health world and all other sectors. And you've heard that over and over again. Context. On the one hand, we have a changing financing system that is pushing the healthcare system to focus on outcomes. This is an incredible opening for those of us who care about obesity prevention and control. On the other hand, the financing system is looking for short-term ROI, short-term return on investment. And this gets us back to this primary and secondary prevention principle and Cheryl talked about, the need to show ROI in three years. That's not just a Massachusetts issue. It's a CMS issue. It's throughout our healthcare delivery system. On the third hand, I've become a little odd here. On the third hand, um, <laughs> there's a greater recognition about social determinants of health from a broader set of health players. And we need to leverage that, whether it's how community benefit dollars are used or how Medicaid dollars are used to support social services. So my ideas. Um, first. We need to create more community capacity to partner with the healthcare system. The CTG is one framework, but whatever framework we use, there needs to be an integrator, there needs to be a backbone organization, there needs to be someone who brings the health sector and the, the community sector and all of the other relevant players together. We have models of that across the country, but we have to systematically invest in, whether it's CTG dollars or other funding streams from CMS or wherever, we have to systematically invest in creating those partnerships. Second, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation needs to, because it is about, that's where the money is, needs to develop a more sophisticated understanding of the role that accountable care organizations and other experiments in health system design can play in addressing obesity and other population health uh, problems. They have made tremendous progress, but we have to be seeing them not only promoting this, but providing financial support for community level investments, uh, and they need to be willing to adjust their time frames so that we get out of that three year box because in the long term, this will fundamentally benefit the healthcare delivery system from a financial standpoint much more than any other sector. And finally, 
the National Prevention Council that uh, Dr. Koh mentioned, uh, which is 20 federal agencies coming together across the federal government, really committed to addressing prevention and health issues. The council needs to stimulate much more direct collaboration among the federal agencies. Right now, they're taking this health lens and applying it within their agencies. And the council now needs to take that next really big ste step, which is actually a harder step, which is to work across their silos and demonstrate to their grantees and give them the permission to grade their funds, to merge their funds, to work together in a common goal of addressing health and addressing their core mission. And that is the only way we will really leverage the resources that are needed to change our community environments and to address those social determinants of health. Thank you.